Good morning from Dubrovnik City Walls, which is rated the number one attraction in the whole of this city. My view of Dubrovnik has completely changed since being up on these walls to the point where I'm even thinking that 35 euros to walk around here may be worth it, trying hard to justify that because the views are that incredible. Probably not still, but I can totally see why it's the number one rated thing to do on TripAdvisor. And definitely when you get the Dubrovnik pass for 35 euros a person, that includes a whole bunch of other stuff. It is without a doubt worth it. I am loving this city more and more. breathtaking. Thoroughly enjoyed all of the views of the city and the surrounding area and also looking out to the sea and to Bokham Island as well which apparently is also worth a visit. Yeah it was kind of odd it kind of felt like I was in a video game like Assassin's Creed or something like that and kind of doing one of those 360 panoramas you can do and it was um, just amazing to see because obviously there's so much of this place that is incredibly well preserved and a lot of this has been standing for hundreds upon hundreds of years so getting to see really what I can only describe as living history is just really special really special so obviously yesterday we were a little bit down on the pricing but actually we come into this with definitely a fresher perspective and we've just been thoroughly enjoying it. Definitely a note though, if you're going to do this, the walls open at 8. We got here about 9ish and it was pretty comfortable. We had a lot of space between us and the next set of people. But we've just come down and it's starting to definitely pile up and it's about 10.30 right now. So let that be your guide if you're wanting to do this. It's probably better to try and beat the traffic. Yeah, and just something to add is that as with the rest of the city, it is very hilly and there are a lot of stairs. So I can't imagine if you have accessibility issues or you are a parent who is pushing a stroller, this would actually be a very difficult city to come to. So another thing to think about. Absolutely. But now, obviously, the city walls are not the only thing that are part of the Dubrovnik Pass that we've got for the next 20 or so hours. So with that, then we are going to head right next door to the Monastery Museum, which also includes one of the world's oldest pharmacies. Why is there a pharmacy museum? Well, back in 1317, the Franciscan monks who lived here actually set up a pharmacy for the 
idea of being able to practice medicine and provide medicines to this town and to the field as well. It's interesting though because the pharmacy is still working nowadays and they still actually use some of those old recipes from 700 years ago for like some skin creams and things like that. So pretty amazing how the history is still living in today. We are now headed to Lovrianat's fort which served as the Red Keep in Game of Thrones. So we just come from the fort, thought it was quite nice, kind of cool. But yeah, there wasn't really anything gravely historic. There were a couple of cannons and I think some old cannonballs, but I think that's mainly about the extent of it. So really, I think the major selling point for it is the fact that it has such an amazing view of the city, all of the walls, and also up to the likes of Lockham Island and all that kind of thing. So if you're really gunning for a good viewpoint, and you want to take a really good shot of it all, then that's a really good place to go. But otherwise... Yeah, it's kind of empty inside. It has a great view of the city. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, you might really enjoy it. But if I didn't have the Dubrovnik Pass, I would say that's not worth it to do alone. No, because there's 15 euros for entry just to that if you're not doing it as part of the rocket class so the walls are still my highlight yep mine too we've now come to banya beach where we are going to take a rest have some lunch and maybe go for a swim depending on how cold the water is Well, we were enjoying the beach and then it started spitting and now there's thunder. So we're thinking we probably ought to start getting inside. Our Dubrovnik Pass includes Rector's Palace. So we're thinking we'll go into that and maybe come back here later if the weather gets nice again. It would be a shame if we can't because honestly this is a lovely beach. From the beaches that we were shown before as being kind of recommended if you're in Dubrovnik's old city then they basically look like cliff faces and concrete bits. Whereas it's actually got, you know, sand, pebbles, that kind of stuff so it's like actual proper beach. So if you are going to try and seek a beach experience in Dubrovnik then Banya needs to be the one for you. palace was 100% worth visiting. What struck me the most was how many times it was rebuilt. It suffered two earthquakes, two fires, one of which was because of a lightning strike, and it also suffered an explosion at some point. So it just kept getting rebuilt. But what an amazing place. Yeah, it was awesome. So in terms of 
the rector in this instance, and it was basically kind of like the Venetian doge. They were the governing head of Dubrovnik at that time, and it switched every month. You could get re-elected as many times as desired by the council around you, but essentially, yeah, you were only ever in seat for a month at a time. So really, really interesting concept. But in terms of the palace itself, they've now converted that into a cultural museum where you can basically see, for one, the living quarters of the rector at the time, but also a lot of the culturally significant artwork, as well as a number of other collections from other parts of Dubrovnik, all of which are really, really interesting. I think the bit that's really struck me though, and this was kind of more in like a cellar part, is um, a collection of photographs from 1991 to 1992 when Dubrovnik was under siege during the Yugoslav Wars. And it's just crazy because obviously the quality of the photos was fantastic because it was only 30 years ago, but it really does shed a light on the destruction and the devastation that was felt by Dubrovnik and indeed the rest of Croatia at the time. So for me that just really hit home really hard because for me any time that I've ever seen a, an exhibit to do with the horrors of war then I've always just been very moved. It is supposed to rain really soon so we're not going back to the beach instead we're heading back to our accommodation. Not least because I'm pretty exhausted. So with that until the next time take care. And keep smiling.